God. My dad and the kids are not far behind us. I was beginning to think you didn't get my message. Wait a minute. Dennis is driving the kids? Of course not. Zoe is driving. Now let's get our story straight before they arrive. Our story? What are you talking about? What are we doing here? Your message was just bizarre. Meet me at the cabin, ASAP, but don't tell anybody. Michael, it's Christmas Eve. I know, it's Christmas Eve. It's Christmas. Oh my God. I tried calling you back, but I couldn't get service. Melissa's phone wasn't working either. She said there were sunspots or something. Sunspots? I came this close to just pretending I never got your call. I had to pick up the food. I had to get the presents. The traffic was a mess. Some of the signals weren't working. Michael, if you wanted to spend Christmas at the lake, you should have just asked me. Wait a minute. You brought presents from home. What else would I do? It's Christmas Eve. Charlotte. I could have used some help, by the way. Did you even listen to my message? Obviously. Well, uh, most of it. It cut off while you were still talking. So you think I dragged this up here just because I felt like it? Are you crazy? Uh, Never mind. <laughs> we don't have time to argue now. My dad and the kids will be here soon, and you and I need to be on the same page. You keep saying that. What does that mean? It means they're going to want answers. It means let's try to be a team for once. They're going to be freaked out enough as it is. Hell, I'm freaked out enough as it is. Answers to what? Michael, you better start making sense or I swear I am walking right back out that door. Charlotte, I left you that message and it was a long message because I got a call from my sister this afternoon. Which one? The one who works at Disney World or the one who works at the Pentagon? <laughs> <laughs> the pen Amy. Amy called me this afternoon. And? And she scared the hell out of me. No time to explain, she said. Just grab the family and go to the cabin. Amy. Armageddon Amy. <laughs> the same Amy who brought a Geiger counter to Lisa's wedding and scared the hell out of the kids trying to keep them off of the beach? <laughs> yes. Yes, that Amy. But, you know, Charlotte, just because she's paranoid doesn't mean it's safe to play in the water. <laughs> no time to explain, grab the family and go. Ruin Christmas because Amy is having one of her fits. I know how it sounds. And then she did explain. She told me the country is under massive cyber attack. Not an annoying virus, war, the big one, a crash, everything back to the Stone Age attack, probably in advance of something worse. Something worse. And you believed her? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I mean, I don't know. It's not like it's impossible. You watch the news, don't you? No. Yeah. Not really. It's bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, all the computers went down at the bank. All of them. All at once. I'm talking really secure systems. I was standing in IT when Roger got off the phone with San Francisco. He said two words before running upstairs like the place was on fire. We're doomed. Save yourselves. Why would you make me work this hard <coughs> to give you the most important news you've ever heard? I'm here, okay? Which probably makes me crazier than Dennis. <laughs> I got your call and I came. But after everything, why would you expect me to buy this story based on nothing but your word? <sighs> after everything. Well, get Melissa on the phone then. She's
probably still at the mall getting a spray-on Christmas tan. <laughs> Ask her what's going on. You know I never get service up here. Then go. Drive back to the city. See for yourself. After everything, maybe the girls at the gym can talk you through it. But our kids are going to walk through that door any minute. If, God forbid, Amy is right, don't you think we should be there for them? I mean, their future may have just turned into a nightmare. Well, their Christmas sure has, that's for certain. I mean, honestly, I would be more concerned about bringing your dad up here right now. I mean, Gwen died in this very room almost a year ago. How do you think he's going to react to that? He barely functions as it is. You think I haven't thought of that? That's my mother you're talking about. You think I'd be here if I thought we had a choice? Michael, haven't you figured out by now that every time somebody starts waving their arms around about the end of the world, they always wind up looking like a lunatic? They are never right. Amy is never right. No. I'm not getting my story straight with you, whatever that means. Not this time. I am going to salvage Christmas, and you are going to keep quiet about all of this. You owe me that much. One day at a time. That's what we tell ourselves at the meetings over and over. But with you, the past is always going to be forever, isn't it? Michael. Isn't it? We have been through all of that. This isn't the time or the place. <sighs> oh my god, you guys. We are so nearly out of gas. We like coasted the last few miles. The little warning voice in the car was practically hysterical. Yes. <laughs> Something really weird is going on. So we, you should have filled up before you left the city. You could have been stranded in the middle of nowhere with your brother in the car and your grandfather. That's what I'm saying is so weird. I tried, but like every gas station was mobbed with cars. Some of them even put out signs saying that they were out of gas. People were angry and yelling at one another. Computers were probably down. They were just closed early for Christmas Eve, that's all. People should have thought of that and, and filled up sooner. That's not what it looked like to me. It was more like, I don't know. More like Santa versus zombies. <laughs> Plus, I have bars, but it says dialing for like ever when I'm trying to make calls. Texts too, and I really need to talk to Bobby. Sweetheart, we never get service up here. You know that. Scott, would you put that thing... Wait, where is Dennis? Rocking a nap in the back seat, I guess. He didn't say a word the whole way, as usual. Sorry, I'll go get him. No. Let me. I could use some fresh air anyway. Mom, I'm serious. Something really weird is going on. Bobby's last text said something about his dad watching the news and wigging out. Is dad wigging out? Should we be wigging out? <laughs> no, we most certainly should not be w Look, it's Christmas Eve and there are sunspots, that's all. Sunspots? <laughs> Corona mass ejections, the grid gets toasted. <laughs> Last minute change of plans. Christmas at the cabin, it's gonna be fun. Come on, I think it's supposed to snow. We can make snow angels and drink hot chocolate, and we'll stay up half the night playing Monopoly just like we used to. I heard about these guys that put up an online zombie apocalypse version of Monopoly, and it's sick. <laughs> <laughs> Still buy the properties, but you never know when the basement could be full of undead squatters. <laughs> Do not pass ghosts like a death sentence, because you gotta keep moving. Enough with the apocalypse, Scott. It's Christmas. Is it too much to ask for a little love and light for a change? And put that thing away or I swear I'm going to confiscate the batteries. One more level. Sunspots? They interfere with radio waves and Wi-Fi and satellites. That's all. It happens all the time. They're completely harmless. And besides, we might get to see the northern lights. We're going to have so much fun, you guys. 
Has anyone else noticed around here how hard it is to get a straight answer? I just want to know what's going on. I could tell you. But then I'd have to either kill you or take you with me. <laughs> just wants that. Plus, I've been disavowed by control. You should stay away from me anyway. Going to. <laughs> oh, hi, Grandpa. How was your nap? He wasn't sleeping. I found him on the dock down by the lake. What were you doing out there, Dad? Do you know how easy it would be to fall in the dark? Do you know how cold that water is? Well, he's fine now. Who's hungry? Michael, how about a fire? You kids, help me carry everything in from the car. Set one more level. Batteries. Are you going to be all right, Dad? I can stay with you if you want. Gwen, Gwen, I, I can't be here. I can't be here, and I can't leave. I don't know what to do. Please tell me what I should do. My sweet Dennis, you know what to do. No. Why are you still hiding? Because a useless man is a... A shameful thing, Gwen. Useless? My man? I don't think so. I'm not your man anymore. I'm not anything to anyone. Dennis. And even when I was your man, I, I just stood by. I just stood by. Do you know what it's like to be that helpless? Has you ever experienced anything like that? I just stood there with my hands in my pockets and let you die. Goodness. And now you should see what's happening to the world. It's just as we feared that it would be. Just a matter of time. Now everyone is useless. Everyone is standing by and just watching the world die. And useless old men should be the first to go. Oh, nonsense. You are not useless, Dennis. Wasn't it you who built this cabin with your bare hands? Or am I confusing you with someone else? You know, I used to love watching you work. You were so powerful. You remember that day you were cutting down beams, the trees for the beams? You remember what happened? No. Well, little Zoe was supposed to be down at the lake with Charlotte. But just as you made that last cut on that big pine tree and it started to sway, she just appeared there, far too close. She was chasing, a, what was it, chipmunks or something? I can't say. I well, I'll, anyway, I'll just never forget the sight of you throwing that chainsaw down. That tree was falling like the sky itself. And you ran like a wild man, like the original wild man of the forest. I was stupid. Don't try to make one of your poems out of it. It was exceedingly brave. Your manliness is in every inch of this house. I wish I could tear the damn thing down. Oh, now that would be useless. Then where would we live? There is no we anymore, Gwen. I can save you. This is just an empty house. Not anymore, it isn't. And right now the sky is falling again. You want to know the last thing I remember? It wasn't the fear or the pain. It was the sound of your voice and your hand on my face. And the 
Last thing I remember about you was just this morning when I woke up and you were still gone. If I had any courage at all, I would have killed Oh, no, myself. no, Dennis, Dennis. Read my letter. Read my letter again. Read the part about stories. That's the best thing I ever wrote, if I do say so myself. <laughs> you know, it turns out Dying can make you really smart. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. See, this is shaping up into a wonderful Christmas. Zoe, why don't you put those things in the kitchen and you can help me start dinner. Everything okay, Dennis? Good. <laughs> So, what do you think? What? About sunspots, chaos, the end of the world as we know it. I can't say. I mean, you saw it coming though, right? You built this place. Solar panels, water supply, basement full of food, <coughs> and some guns too. I found a stash. Don't worry, I'm not gonna accidentally shoot Zoe, but this isn't a cabin, man. It's a compound. Are there tunnels? Gas masks? Radios? Did Grandma know that you're a secret survivalist? Whatever. I know that you're faking it. <coughs> Going crazy? I know it's all an act. You just pretend to be losing it so you don't have to talk to anyone. Well, whatever. Your secret's safe with me. You know, he's more frightened than you are. He's a punk. <laughs> My dad would have popped him in the mouth right then. Well, he's a boy with no future, and he knows it. That's what all the bluster is about. I mean, you think you're scared? Imagine how he feels. The world has taught him nothing real, except to consume stuff. That's all his generation knows how to do. It's no wonder they're angry. Well, he's in the top percentile. Well, he's just living out the story he's been given. What's this about? Oh my god. Grandpa, you scared me. Are you okay? Am I okay? Oh, it's it's nothing. I just I just I just really need to talk to Bobby and it's just it's just a really important day and I can't believe this is happening today. Of all the days, why does it have to happen now? I can't do this alone. If I have to do this alone, it's... Zoe, it's Christmas Eve. Yeah? Please don't tell me there are sunspots. You don't believe that, do you? I... Wait. You're talking to me. Does that mean you're feeling better? I mean, I thought it would be kind of hard for you, because, you know... Because... Because when I think of you and Grandma, I think of this, like, unbelievable, unquenchable love. Like in the movies, where you guys would follow each other through different time and incarnations, but always end up recognizing one another. Because that's the kind of love you had, and nothing could ever, ever stop that. It's the kind of love I want. I mean, that's what I believe in. Like one of Grandma's poems, and... I'm sorry, I'm just... I'm rambling, because I just... Because she is scared to death. You know, I totally saw my life turning out differently. I was going to a 
audition for the Maya Ruiz Dance Company. And, and the French Club is going to Paris, and Bobby is... He's... It was like my year, you know? And, and now it's like waking up from this dream and getting this really weird feeling that you haven't woken up at all. You're just stuck in this nightmare. And everyone you know is in on it. Yeah. I don't know what I should do. What should I do? I can't say. Um, I better go help mom in the kitchen. I hope you keep feeling better. Gwen, what I wouldn't give for one of your famous margaritas about now. <laughs> Me too, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you picked a hell of a time to leave. Well, it's like the song says, you gotta know when to fold them. <laughs> <laughs> Michael and I, it's not going to work. You know, I read a magazine article once that challenged you to think of a movie with dialogue between two women where they weren't talking about a man. <laughs> well, there... What if... Huh. I know, right? Just saying. So, um, how's the event planning business going? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's getting really old. All I do is make sure everyone else is having the time of their lives. I'm the wall that keeps out the real world for a little while. Hell or high water. That's what I've become. Hmm. Did I ever tell you I practically grew up on a surfboard? My dad taught me. I couldn't count the number of evenings we'd head out to the beach after he got off work and ride until it was too dark to see anymore. I got really good, too better than most of the boys at any rate. A fact which I'm sure rubbed them raw in all the tender places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was never quite clear whether they wanted to sweep me off of my feet into the back seat <laughs> or knock me down once and for all. <laughs> Here we are, talking about men again. Yeah, I guess, but not really. I was just thinking how it felt to get out there offshore and wait for the water. I could feel the waves coming from a mile away. I could feel it in my hands. It was like the ocean was rising up to take a deep breath. And then I'd stand up and just fly when she exhaled. It sounds heavenly. It was. But I lost my touch a long time ago. I hadn't 
heard that. Well, it's true. And it makes me so angry with myself. There you are. The kids are helping me with dinner, and then I think they should open one present tonight, like always. I climbed the hill behind the house to see if I could get cell service. I usually do up there, but no dice. But I could still see the lights from the city, so for now, at for least... For God's sakes, Michael! I'm beginning to think you want the world to end. What is it that you hate about your life so much? What keeps you from seeing what's right in front of you? Is that what this is about? What are you talking about? This whole emergency thing is about getting me to change my mind, isn't it? No. Why would I do that? Wait. That is not what I meant. I do want you to change your mind. <laughs> Never wanted... You're trying to scare me into staying. We had a deal. Get through Christmas Shh. and then... Keep your voice down. I know we had a deal. There's no need to remind me. That is not what this is about, Charlotte. It's not about you and me at all right now. Can't you see that? It's about something bigger. It hasn't been about you and me for a very long time, Michael. Just about you. And about your needs. And about your unfulfilled dreams. And about how disappointed you are with your life. That is not fair. Fair? It's not my fault that you didn't get to stay in the band back then and take a shot with your music. But I feel like I have been paying for it ever since. It's not my fault that you hate your job. It's not my fault that life is just life. You've always needed it to be so much more than it is. But it's not epic. It's not a blockbuster movie. It's just ordinary. Now, see, that's your problem right there. <laughs> Life doesn't have to be ordinary. It never did. Yes, it did. Paying the bills is ordinary. Raising a family is ordinary. I'm ordinary. No, no, you're not. Don't you dare. Don't you dare placate me. You know it's true. Why else would you start sleeping with whores? It wasn't like that, and you know it. It happened one time. Is that supposed to mean something to me? You gambled away our entire life savings and then gave what was left to a Las Vegas prostitute, but only once? So that makes it okay? I didn't say it was okay. Then what? What are you saying? Just admit it. I'm not who you wanted to spend your life with. I never have been. That is not true. Then why, Michael? Why? Because I was lonely. Okay? And so bored that I wanted to die. And, and sick to death of getting up every day and going and sitting in that goddamn bank all day long, watching over other people's money. And all the time I could feel the walls just getting thicker and thicker. 
until I snapped. I just wanted to be somebody else for a minute. Anybody else? Because you look at me every day. You're the one who's disappointed, Charlotte. Some days, you don't look at me at all. And I can't blame you. Oh, Michael. I'm sorry. How did we get here? to us. I don't know. A million wrong turns, I guess. That's too many to go back. That's what I've been trying to tell you. It's too late. Please don't say that. I think it's true. Charlotte, I'm sorry for everything. And I'm willing to tr retrace every one of those steps. <laughs> right now, the world out there really is changing. I think we're in trouble and we need... No! No, no, no! The world is the same as it always has been. We'll wake up tomorrow and watch it on Good Morning America and it'll be like it never happened. We will be the same. That is the way the world works, Michael. The apocalypse is not coming to save you. What does that even mean? It means we had a deal. Charlotte, please. I want to get through Christmas, and then I need to start feeling normal again. We tried, and we <gasps> failed. It happens. I need to start building a future for myself. A future? What do you think I've been talking about? What kind of future do you think anyone has? If this is happening the way Amy said, there's no going back. We need each other now more than ever. The past is what it is and the present is here and gone. A better future is all any of us has left. Well, that sounds like one of Melissa's hippie slogans. Did she get that out of a book? Well, maybe she got it from an ex-whore. Maybe we all want a better future. <coughs> Please, God. <sighs> Chill out, Zoe. I already told you it's not working. Do you see me using it? I just want to see for myself. What's going on here? <coughs> oh my God, I know it. It's true. Something really bad is going on. No, no. Everything is fine. Don't be so dramatic. And guess what? It's time to open a present. <coughs> Just one now. Don't bother asking for more, because you'll just have to wait until morning. Mom, you know we're not in kindergarten anymore, right? <laughs> I'm serious, Scott. It's still Christmas, no matter where we are. And rules are rules. It's a tradition. I forgot something. I'll be right back. Okay, what's that all about? Seriously, what on earth is going on, Dad? Why won't you talk to us? First we get your freaky phone call, then the phones go nuts, and then the gas stations stop working, and now Mom's acting super weird. You can't expect us not to notice. Yeah, it, it's like sh she's in a hostage movie where she's trying to act all normal, but there's really a guy with a gun in the next room listening to every word, and if she makes one false move, 
somebody's going to get it. It's creepy. <laughs> Plus, no one <coughs> seems to care that I really need to make a phone call. Either that, or I'm walking back to the city. Okay, all right. Your mom is doing the best she can. Would it kill you to humor her and have a normal Christmas Eve? <laughs> normal? What part of this day is normal? All right then, semi-normal. And we'll talk later, I promise. Talk about what? What is there to talk about? Think you meant quasi-normal or pseudo-normal, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. <coughs> now, everybody sit down. Here you go, honey. And let's enjoy our evening. <laughs> Yes, let's all sit down. <coughs> Zoe, I didn't get to ask you about this, the uh, dance club meeting today. Did Sarah announce the parts for the spring show? Yeah, she did. Well? I got the lead. <laughs> That's wonderful! Why didn't you say something sooner? Not that I'm surprised. Nobody else in the entire school comes close to your talent. Okay. You should have seen it, Mom. When Sarah called my name, I thought Brittany was going to explode. <laughs> and Alicia looked like she was going to murder someone. <laughs> well, they can't complain. Nobody else works half as hard as you, and that's the important part. That's what will get you into Maya Ruiz. And then, who knows? Your future is so bright, we all have to wear shades. <laughs> Congratulations, Zoe. Well done. Thank you. Scott, honey, did you pick a present? Don't you want to talk about my future first? Scott. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm serious. I want to talk about the future, too. I've decided what I want to be when I grow up. Really? What's that? A lawyer. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. What made you decide that? Well, the other day in class, we watched this movie called Aaron Brockovich to learn about class action lawsuits. And I was like, holy crap, that's it. That's what I want to do. You could say it was an epiphany. Well, that's amazing. You know, lawyers can really do a lot of good work in the world if they choose the right cause to champion. Well, yeah. Good for you. Because when the zombie apocalypse finally hits, it won't be because of some random mutation or like an act of God or something. Somebody in a lab somewhere is responsible. And not to mention the greedy executives on the top floor who forced them to go too far with their research. They're already out there doing it. And it's only a matter of time before the shit it's the fan. Scott! It's true. And I'll be there to get rich, making them all pay. It'll be my first case. <laughs> you would represent the zombies. <laughs> They're a seriously misunderstood and oppressed group of people. <laughs> or they will be, I guess. Oh but Besides, you're one to talk. Whenever Twilight came out, every girl in America wanted to have vampire babies. Okay, all right. <laughs> Zoe, why don't you pick a present then? <laughs> I really don't feel like it, Mom. Okay, fine. I'll pick one for you. What is this world coming to? I remember the days when we had to take turns guarding the tree to keep you two from opening everything in sight. Even the ones that work for you. <laughs> this one will just have to do. No way. You and I are going to the Heritage Canyon Spa for an entire day. Melissa and some of the girls will be there too. And girlfriend, we are going to get the treatment. If that doesn't live for you <coughs> after the spring show, I don't know what will. Oh my god. I know, right? <laughs> Merry Christmas! Thanks. 
Just be sure to wear earplugs. <laughs> so you don't have to listen to Melissa talk for an entire day. <laughs> I'm sorry yours isn't wrapped, Scott. I was a little short on time. World War Z. Righteous. I guess you can call it educational research for your first big case. Did you bring your Xbox? <laughs> yeah, you know it. Thank God for Grandpa's solar panels. Sustainable gaming for years to come. <laughs> what about you guys? Aren't you going to open a gift? No, I think I'll wait. Savor the suspense. Necktie or screwdriver set? Oh, come on. That's not fair. It could be cologne this year. <laughs> you, you should open one up. Not really, I'm okay. Okay, you guys, I am going to check on dinner, and then who wants to play Monopoly? Oh my god. Michael? Oh, wicked. All right, look. Don't panic. I'll switch to the solar power. The batteries are charged up. I checked earlier. Just stay put, okay? This isn't funny. It's okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. For God's sake, you left the trash can in the middle of the floor. <laughs> Sorry. Are you sure this isn't Halloween? This is more like it. Get off my foot, Dork! Oh, okay, Shut that's up. enough. <laughs> Hang on just a minute and your dad will get the light. Oh my god! Mom? Michael! This isn't funny. What now? Michael, there's somebody at the door! Oh, why do they have a flashlight? Well, don't open it. Give me a minute. What? Michael! They're trying to get in! Charlotte, do you want lights or do you want me to answer the door? <laughs> oh, shit! Michael, hurry! Aren't you supposed to be free? Everybody calm down. Sheriff's Department, anybody home? Why didn't she say that sooner? <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, Randy. Hello, Michael. Sorry if I startled you folks. Everyone's a bit jumpy tonight. I'll be lucky not to get shot before sunup. <sighs> Lord, Randy, you nearly gave us all heart failure. <sighs> Merry Christmas. We, we were just opening up a few gifts, weren't we, kids? In the dark? <laughs> Would you like some hot chocolate? No, thanks. I better keep moving. Busy night, then? What brings you here? When did you all come up? Are you uh, aware of the situation? Situation? <laughs> all hell is broken loose. Pardon my French. You folks are lucky you plan Christmas up here and not in the city. Everything's going down. Communications, internet. Looks like the power grid, too, now. Good thing Dennis put in those solar panels. They're going to come in handy. Was it sunspots? <laughs> sunspots? Uh, coronal mass ejections. Huh. No, I don't know what that is. Word we're getting is it's a sneak attack. Like some sort of cyber Pearl Harbor. Only these days, that means everywhere gets hit. How can you know a thing like that, Randy, for certain? I mean, these things happen all the time. <coughs> Power outages happen. They always come back on, don't they? Isn't that right? I guess so. All I know for sure is Homeland Security started sending out alerts and updates this afternoon, but even those went quiet about an hour ago. No, I think we could be pretty sure it wasn't, um, what did you call it? Sunspots. <laughs> We're likely under attack, and it looks to be a whopper. Been building up for years, if you ask me. Wicked. Hard to say for sure, though. You're right. We'll sort it out soon enough, I expect. The world seems to be pretty good at spinning, no matter what. In the meantime, you folks would better stay put. Things are likely to get hairy in the city if they don't get things back up in a hurry. I'll try and keep you posted. Whoa, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean by that? What do you mean things will get hairy? It means people are gonna do what people always do when the food starts to run out and the lights won't come on. Hasn't been pretty before and it won't be pretty now. A lot of people could get hurt. Oh my god, Bobby, I have to get back. Zoe, hush. Now that right there is my whole point. You can't leave, or you shouldn't at any rate. And uh, speaking of Dennis, that's why I'm here. Dennis? Why? Because he's sitting outside in my patrol car. What? what? You mean he's not in here? Well, uh, we, we, we thought, thought he, he was, was napping. No, I found him down at the dam, standing outside the railing, looking over the edge. Don't worry, he's fine now. 
Any other night, I'd have to take him down to mental health for observation, but under the circumstances, I'll call it after hours sightseeing and let you folks handle it. Observation? Wait, you mean you think he was... Well, they don't really pay me to think. I'm just telling you what happened. <laughs> it's up to you how to put two and two together. He hasn't been himself recently. Well, I expect that'll be true of a lot of folks now. I'll go get him. Just keep a closer eye on him for a bit. How could we not notice he was gone? What is wrong with us? Whatever. Scott, what? You all act like he's a pet. He knows what he's doing. You can't see that? <laughs> Dad, are you all right? What on earth were you doing out there? Did you walk all the way to the dam? Are you okay? He'll be fine. Just getting some fresh air, right, Dennis? Before the snow falls? Thank you, Randy. Thank you very much. Well, don't thank me too soon. That's not the end of my business just yet. I got another one out here who says he belongs to you folks. I found him walking up the road from the city. We weren't expecting anyone else. Oh my god, Bobby! So we thank God. See, I told you. Will you please take his off? You came. You actually came. I told you I would. And I would have been here a lot sooner, but I ran out of gas and I had to walk for like miles. None of the stations were open. Are you okay? Oh my god. Oh. What the hell? <laughs> uh, take these off. Why is he in handcuffs? He's not a criminal. It's my job to be cautious, young lady. Especially tonight. Times like these, there's no knowing who's what. There you go. I didn't know when I was going to see you again. I'll go check on his vehicle, but God only knows when you guys are going to get a tow truck. I don't know how to thank you, Randy. If there's anything we can do for you, just say so. Well, if things get as bad as they say they might, I'd take a quart or two of Gwen's peaches from the cellar. Once Dennis does as usual and keeps them all for himself, right, Dennis? No more holding out on me. Night, folks. Keep your heads down. Seriously, Grandpa? You were gonna ditch us? Now? Really lame. What? All right, what's your name again? Billy? Bobby. I'm Bobby, Mr. Biller. Remember? We <coughs> met me at the school play in October. All right, Bobby, what's going on down there? Tell me what you saw. Well, it's pretty messed up. Everything just stopped working. I saw a grocery store with the windows busted out, and one place was even on fire. What about the police? The National Guard? What are they doing about it? There are a few cops, you know, I guess, but they were mainly just driving around with their lights on. None of the traffic lights were working, so I had to drive on the sidewalks through the parking lot to get here. <laughs> All the power went out. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is really happened. Dad, what's going on? Are we gonna die? It's almost time now, Dennis. Mom? Well, that settles it. Your dad was right, and I was wrong. Your Aunt Amy, God help us, <laughs> was right. It appears the shit really has hit the fan. <laughs> but right now, the only thing I know for certain is there's dinner in the oven. <laughs> Thanks to Dennis, the lights are on. And I think we've had all the bad news we're going to get for tonight. And it's still Christmas Eve, so come on, who's hungry? We can't do the apocalypse on an empty stomach, right? <laughs> There's still one thing that I don't understand. Just one? What's that, Scott? Why is he here? <laughs> Zoe? 
You know, that's a good question. Um, well, this this was going to be the day that we planned on telling. I promised Zoe I'd be here. Pay attention, Dennis. You're almost up. And why is that, Bobby? Um, because... Because I'm pregnant. around my house like one of Scott's zombies for a goddamn year. While, while my life burned to the ground. What was that? Your retirement plan? Hey, kids, come on, let's go to the kitchen. No. We all deserve to hear this. It's a full-on Christmas miracle. We all saw it. Lazarus up from the grave. I don't owe you any explanations. No. What about your little trip to the dam tonight? Care to explain that? I mean, we're here, hanging on for dear life, and you were climbing over the railing, thinking about what? Exactly. Huh? Oh. Why should I even be surprised? Truth is, you've been gone for years. Mom had to die for me to see it. What? Wake up just in time to hit me for saying the obvious? Mom is dead. And you wish you were. Well... I've got good news. You're probably going to get your wish. Because it looks to me like everybody's number is up. No need to jump, man. Just, just sit there and wait. You're good at that. Michael, is this what you had in mind when you said we should get our story straight? <laughs> <laughs> Is this your idea of being there for our kids? No. This is me being honest. Maybe it's the right time and place after all, Charlotte. I mean, you heard Randy. This may be the only time we ever get. Okay, fine. Let's be honest. But can we at least deal with one problem at a time? Problem? Is that what I am to you, a problem? I'm sorry, Zoe. Problem's the wrong word. It's, well, it's just that... Problem's a great word. <laughs> Let's go with that. I mean, I just found out I'm going to be a grandpa on the eve of Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> How does that not fit the definition of a problem? And you! What do you have to say? Come on, any... Thoughts you'd like to share about your little population explosion here at the end of the world? <laughs> Michael, calm down. No, Charlotte, let the boy talk. He walked all this way. Speak up! Mr. Dillard, I don't know anything at all about the world. Is that 
that it? I don't know anything about the world, except that Zoe's at the center of it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, Valentine's Day cards aren't going to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Not now! Dad, we love each other. Please. You're not qualified to use that word. You haven't picked up enough stars yet. <coughs> Although, clearly, you think you're old enough to... My fault! <laughs> and you think you are qualified? You think we don't see what kind of a train wreck your marriage is? I have news for both of you. I'm not in preschool anymore. It doesn't work to just put the TV on to distract me and go in the other room to have your real lives. I have eyes. <coughs> and what I've seen has not looked like love for a really long time. This baby isn't going to be a problem. Because we <laughs> love each other. love each other. Well, that just proves how clueless you really are. Because if you really understood, I mean really understood what it takes to carry a family on your back your entire life, even when the world isn't falling apart, then you would be running off a cliff right now! I'm sorry. No, you're right, Michael, about a lot of things. You really are. And you're afraid for a very good reason. And believe me, I know what that looks like. Zoe, this moment isn't about me. It's about you and Bobby, but could you give an old man a couple of minutes, okay? Your mom, grandmother, my best friend, who, who am I kidding? Uh, she was nothing short of being my savior. Less than a year ago, she died right here. I moved this table out and put her bed here so that she could see the Christmas tree. She loved the lights and the cheap tinsel. I would have stopped putting up a tree a long time ago. Waste of a good tree, I told her. But she wouldn't hear of it. This is one of the best stories we have, she said. Don't ruin it. Don't be stingy with the story, Dennis. It has a baby in it, and music, and the kind of love that makes you sit down and shut up for a while. Makes you think that we could write a whole new story if we wanted to. God, she was such a poet. <laughs> to her, everything was just a story. Life was nothing but a story. <sighs> Michael, I think these kids deserve to hear your story. <sighs> My story. 
story? My story? No, Michael. Our story. Or have you forgotten? <laughs> that was different. Why? Why is it different? Well, for starters, I was 25 and you were 23. We were... What? Adults? <laughs> <laughs> Please, don't make me laugh. We were foolish children and you know it. What are you guys talking about? I remember that day well. This all feels very familiar. <laughs> what day? Somebody say something real <coughs> very soon, or I swear to God I'm going to walk out that door. I was pregnant with Scott when your father and I got married. Holy Scott. shit. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> For 19 years, we've celebrated our anniversary in April, but it's really in July. Looking back, I honestly don't know why we bothered to be so secretive. We weren't fooling anybody, except for you, I suppose. But you were 23. Oh, so what? My mother was only 16 when she had to marry a pilot who was renting a room from us after the war. They went for 57 years before she died. You can't say that it's the best way to go about things, Michael, but you got to admit that it's a pretty old story. Come to think of it, isn't it part of the plot on Christmas Eve? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> First we get Lazarus, and now Jesus and Mary. <laughs> what next? You're gonna turn water into wine? Right now that sounds like a pretty good idea. <laughs> you know, Michael, I couldn't have cared less how old we were. The only thing that mattered to me was I was crazy about you. My God, you were so handsome up there on that stage. And so sexy. Every girl in the place thought so. Uh, sexy? <laughs> on stage? Uh, what exactly did you do? Your dad was the most amazing guitar player I have ever seen. He was in this awesome band, and man, could they rock the house. They were booked somewhere in town every weekend. A bunch of my girlfriends and I, we started going to all of their shows. I hate to admit it now, but we were pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Typical groupies. One night, after a show, we were sitting in this greasy hamburger joint in this really shady neighborhood, but we were invincible, right? Anyway, in walks the guitar player by himself, just getting a burger. Big Al's Badass Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Best in town. All of the other girls jumped up and just mobbed him. You would have thought he was Paul McCartney. Please, Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> I still don't know why, but I just stayed in my seat. I just stared at him over the top of my chocolate milkshake and didn't move a muscle. And then he looked back. It's hard not to. I mean, there you were, just sitting there so cool, you know? <clears throat> like an earthquake could hit, and you would still just sit there looking at it. 
Yeah, right. If you call uh, total paralysis cool. <laughs> and then he took his hamburger and left. I had to work the night of their next show, and it nearly killed me. I made the girls tell me every minute that I missed. And then, the weekend after that, he asked me out. Came right straight through the crowd to me. I'd been waiting two whole weeks. Right straight to me, without even knowing my name, and asked me for a date. Five months later, we were married. Six months after that, we were parents. Somewhere along the way, you stopped playing. I am so sorry, Michael. You know, I had forgotten what a really good story that is. But there's one thing you always leave out. <laughs> I don't think so. I remember every detail. Not this one. <clears throat> I never told it to you. I like your version, where I get to play the sexy rock star <laughs> who sweeps you off your feet. <clears throat> Now, I didn't stop that night because I wanted a hamburger. I wasn't even hungry. I stopped that night because I saw you in the window. It's not the first time I have noticed you. I didn't ask you out that night because I was paralyzed too. I thought you were just weighing your chances with my friends. I knew right then that I would do anything to know you. Right! We get it! Fireworks! And then wedding bells and babies and a house in the suburbs. It's all so American dream. Scott, I have just about had it with your mouth. Don't you take anything seriously? Oh, I'm serious. You wanted some truth-telling tonight, Dad, and it's my turn now. I hate your story. I think it sucks. Because the whole time you were playing golf and, and renovating the kitchen and, and trading in the Chevy for a Beamer, the world was already on fire. You were just too stupefied to see it. Or, or maybe you just didn't care. You act like we don't know what's up. You people have been living large all this time, leaving us to pay for it. What would you have done differently? Well, I might never know who wrote that code that brought the grid down today, but I'd love to shake his hand and say, awesome, man. What took you so long? Still, if it hadn't been that, global warming would have done the job just fine, or a plague, or economic collapse, or some genetically modified freak show set loose on the world, or, or how about just plain fatigue? Do you realize what your generations have done? Do you have any idea? Our futures are so bright, Mom, we have to wear radiation suits. We have nothing left. So, so excuse me if I don't want to get all warm and fuzzy right now. Now that you all can't go on pretending everything's peachy, I don't have to sit here listening to the constant smiley face bullshit any longer. Scott. No, no. You too. You call yourselves men? Right, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And no. 
it's more complicated than that. It always is. It only seems simple when you're trying to find somebody else to blame. How about this? This is simple enough for you, Grandpa? Scott. This is the future. You know I'm right. That's why you built this cabin and stashed these guns. It's why you freaked out and dragged the whole family up here tonight. From now on, the only thing that matters is whether the real men are ready to do what has to be done. Scott. It's kill or be killed. Scott, listen to me. No. <laughs> you st <sighs> oh boy, it's not even loaded properly. Get up! Get up! Here, I've fixed it for you. When you hold a gun, you've got to hold it like you mean it. Come on, like this! That, that is enough. No, Michael. Scott wants to teach us how to be real men. Well, I'm ready for my first lesson. And he's right. There's no time to lose. You're gonna have to start right here. Come on, you're not afraid to pull the trigger, are you? Right? So what are you waiting for? You're going to have to shoot me, Scott. Because if this is the road you want to walk down, that's what you're going to have to do to get me out of your way. So do it! Do it! Can't you see, son? This is what the, what brought the world to what it is today. Kill or be killed, do what has to be done. That's what's destroying your future. In my day, there weren't zombies. There were commies! And I wasn't much older than you when I went down to the recruiting station and volunteered for Vietnam. Do what has to be done, we told each other. Semper Fi! <coughs> Uh, does it ever occur to you why I called your grandmother my savior? It's because when I got back, I was so broken that I only saw two choices. Either kill myself or somebody else. Uh, she put me back together again or made me feel like I could. The world needs you to grow up and become a man, boy. You're right about that. But not like this. This new world needs men to finally find another story to tell. Oh, God, Gwen was right for so long. She saw this coming. She wrote me a letter right before she left. I'm going to read it to you now before I change my mind again. And don't be afraid, Dennis. Our story has reached a turning point, but it's not over. Everything about our lives. Everything <laughs> about our lives is just a story. And no matter what happens, we each get to decide how to tell it. Every day we choose whether our story is a heart-wrenching tragedy or a warm and heroic adventure. And when one story reaches a climax, another always appears, ready to begin. We get to start over on a brand new page one. And now is the moment when the beleaguered hero, that's you, Dennis, has to face himself and reassemble the best parts of who he has been 
into something new, into the one person capable of carrying the plot forward. It's up to you. Will chapter two be a descent into grief and madness or transcendence and transformation? No one can choose for you. I believe in you. I cheer for you. This is a story I will watch from the edge of my seat. Love, Gwen. <coughs> Above all. Above all. Love. love. So yes, the only thing I've had on my mind for almost a year is to follow her. I didn't want a new story. Page one at my age, really? And to be honest with you, there's not much of a demand for it. <laughs> no one has any use for a 71-year-old hero anymore. Nobody even believes that such a thing exists. Then I let that fact trap me into darkness. And I'm sorry about that. I, I really am. But all of a sudden, it doesn't really seem matter much what the world thinks anymore. I mean, the world ceased to exist tonight. And we're still here. I'm still here. Gwen was right. Our stories are all that we have. And when one ends, what choice do we have but to make a new one? I'm so sorry, Grandpa. Bobby, come on, get over here. <laughs> Charlotte, every one of those million wrong turns. That's not true. We got here together. But I truly believe it only takes one to get back. I have no idea what the future holds. None at all. But I'm asking you, please don't give up on me. Please forgive me. Michael. I don't want any future without you in it. I have some work to do first to get my touch back. I don't know what that means, but I will help you. No, I said I have some work to do. Just me. Please be patient. Okay. And just so you know, it's probably going to involve a surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I have to fight my way through zombies and walk to the ocean. Oh, Michael. <laughs> Oh, 
before we come here. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, Dad. No, no. I'm sorry. I never should have said those things to you. I love you. And whatever new story is growing inside you right now, I want to be a part of it. It won't be easy. But it never is. We'll, we'll figure it out together. Okay? And Billy can stay too. It's Bobby. Oh my gosh, the ham! Viral. I wouldn't have jumped. Hell, she wouldn't have let me. <laughs> you know, this is going to sound crazy. Sometimes I think she never left. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you like burnt linoleum, you're going to love dinner. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> no thanks. I'm good. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> Come on, everybody, dinner's on me tonight. Ha, ha, ha. 